What up guys, and for this video we're doing something called a new series called Broke on a Budget. And in this episode 001, I'm going to show you whether or not you can use a Nikon D5200 for taking photos in this day and age in 2020. And I myself am not a professional photographer. I am mainly focused on videos and videography and video editing but I also do photos on the side but for the purpose of this very special episode I'll take you guys on a ride with me and I'm gonna invite my friend Devin who does photography professional photo shoots and I'm gonna let him use the camera with no experience and see what he can do with my Nikon so let's go guys Okay, what up guys? We are here in uh, the middle of a parking lot. This is my buddy over here, Devin. What's going on? He's the professional uh, photographer guy over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, for today's video, I gave him my uh, Nikon D5200. And he has no experience with the Nikon. I don't even know how to change the ISO, so. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna show him how. <laughs> We're in the middle of a parking lot. The, the, the park itself isn't that great, but it's up for challenge if he can show us a thing or two about photography. I'm gonna show him a thing or two how he can use the, the Nikon and hopefully you'll be surprised by the results. So let's get her going. So uh, first I'm gonna show you the basics first. You're on off. <laughs> Perfect, on and off. It's on, Switch. lens cap is off. All right, we're good to go right now. Right. We're good to go. And then uh, your next dial is your mode dial. So the this here, so for photos, what are you gonna be shooting on? Uh, manual? Yes, we're, I'm just gonna be doing manual. It's the one I'm most comfortable uh, using. Mm -hmm. uh, just adjusting the settings just so I can compensate for whatever I'm really shooting for. And then next we have the shutter here with this guy. Awesome. And to change the aperture, you wanna hold this guy. The, the word is the EV exposure plus one or the minus one to three. Love it. Hold that with that. That should change your aperture. Perfect. And then to change uh, ISO is uh, you turn the camera to the side. There's the FN. Huh. FN in combination with the same shutter. Awesome. Perfect. I didn't even see that button there. And then to go into live view mode, you just flick it down. Perfect. Do you know how to change the white balance? White balance, uh, go back to the... Press I. Mm -hmm. No, no, okay. Uh, maybe I'm just spoiled that way, right? <laughs> you got your, uh, your cloudy. <laughs> you got your cloudy, you got your... Uh... <laughs> okay, this I button, perfect. Okay, I, th I think I'm just gonna go... Yeah, direct sunlight, screw that. Yeah, we're just gonna leave that as is. Um, if not, maybe just auto. Actually, yeah, I think I'll just leave it as auto. Um, most cameras having auto white balance is most of the time okay anyways because in post-processing uh, if you know what you're doing you just adjust the the white balance there and you can easily correct it so as long as it's not too way off like if your image is looking way too orange or way too blue it's probably because your white balance is completely off uh, in this case it's automatic it's, you're good to go Okay, so even at, uh, so for this tree right here, uh, what I'm looking to do is get the whole tree in frame um, without getting this tree in. So that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Maybe we'll just remove that in post-processing or, or something. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get this in a rule of thirds. However, this tree is really blocking. What is the rule of thirds? So rule of thirds is when you have the main subjects. So in this case, it's the tree in the third quadrant of the photo. So if you break it into threes, one, two, three, it'll be in the third quadrant. I'm looking if I can get a photo like that. However, with this lens right now, as well as this tree, find a way around that. Okay. And the reason why I'm changing levels is because I want to get this at a more interesting angle and more of the ground in it. So one of the things you might notice is that I'm not even looking in the viewfinder is just because camera is really low to the ground and I'm shooting it on autofocus like your camera has that function you can use autofocus it's perfectly okay 
uh, especially if you're not able to view, uh, look into the viewfinder, it's very, very handy. And then obviously you just wanna check if your photo is in focus before you leave uh, by any means. tip as well so if you do see something that is noteworthy to take a photo of one of the other things you can also ask yourself while you're shooting is what could I add to this photo this image that would make it look better and sometimes that is just patiently waiting around for a person so I actually stood here because I saw this individual just running running around and I kind of wanted to use him in the frame so I just stood here patiently waiting for him to come back so he's probably going to do another lap hopefully what I'm looking for specifically is I'm looking for a backdrop that would make Peter our subject stand out a lot since Peter of course is wearing all black we're going to find something a little bit more colorful so that in contrast with that color he's going to stand out um, so in our case maybe something a little bit more green if not we're looking at one of these walls because the, the shade is a lot a uh, lot lighter than the clothing like in photography I, like even for for headshots i'm always looking to separate the main subject with the background and yeah the background is always it's, it's kind of like steak and fries for example um, the main subject is the steak and then the fries are like the side. Uh, the, the side's always meant to complement uh, the steak, not the other way around. So uh, yeah, just something to also keep in mind as well. Okay, perfect. Okay. So what would you do? You would ask me one, one hand in the front. Yep, so for, for, for male posing, it's usually really, really easy. Uh, I would have it where the males, it's kind of like your body's facing one position and your uh, face is facing the opposite side. So if Peter wants to uh, turn his head this way, yep, look that way, and then turn his head a little bit more this way, perfect. And then that's exactly the pose I would have. And for his hands, I would highly recommend him just curl them. With photographers, it's always like, our models, like, what do you do with my hands? <laughs> yes, so for, for models, what you do with your hands, for males, is pretty uh, simple as well. Um, this works with almost all posing. You can have one hand in the pocket, and uh, I would close the fist just a little bit more with the other hand and have it more in the, no, the other, yes, yes, have it more, more in the pocket. Yeah, yes, a bit more, keep going, keep, like almost like you're digging, yeah, perfect. And then for the other hand, I'd have it more curled into a fist. So when you're shooting males specifically, uh, you don't really want to keep your hands too open because it's more of a feminine look. And for females, that's perfectly okay. So for guys, a little bit into a closed fist. You don't need to be clenching your fist by any means, just a little bit closed. And yeah, and then can you move your left leg forward a bit? Uh, right leg. Yes, right leg, sorry. Perfect. Settings are, let's see, 400 and 4.8 with ISO at 100. ISO 100, you want to keep it as low as possible uh, most of the time, just so your image is less noisy, there's less grain in it, and yeah, just a overall a lot better. It's the best quality for the camera. Yes, best quality than camera. Like if, if you can, whenever you can, I would shoot in the lowest possible setting, that way there's less uh, noise in it. Uh, sometimes you do want to add noise to a photo, maybe for artistic reasons or uh, if it's in a really dark situation and you need uh, to increase ISO so it so your light sensor is more sensitive to the light um, the offside is that uh, the photo is a lot uh, noisy however upside is the, the, the photo is brightened up you know, this camera is great because it has more autofocus points than my camera. So for this composition, I guess the only thing I could really say about it is just finding things to, to frame your subjects. So I had Peter here stand in this door area. That way this door area kind of uh, frames him, especially with how it is. And then I'm just doing the photo like this. 
Um, you can do this with any any two walls as long as as long as it's a corner. All right, guys. So that was uh, Devin's over here. Three tips on uh, his. Uh, Photography helping us out because I ain't a photographer. He's more of the expert over here. So where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on mostly Instagram. I'm mostly there. I'm also starting a YouTube channel as well uh, Hopefully by the time that is my first video is up uh, By the time this video is up, I mean <laughs> My video will hopefully be up as well. So you guys <laughs> can also check that out. I don't really have a YouTube name yet. Uh, Instagram is devin.shoots though. Check that out and uh, overall thoughts on using that Nikon. Is, can you still use it in this in 2020? Yeah, you could 100% use that in 2020. Um, I would say that the photos are probably going to look a lot better when it's on a screen though because that LCD screen makes it a little bit tough to view. Other, other than that, uh, yeah, you probably most definitely use that as a camera to shoot on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, yeah, that's 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 gonna be a wrap for this video. If you guys want to check it out, check it out. Links in the description for all the camera gear that is mentioned. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. You're watching Rogue Vision Collective, where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something.